G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again for another VB.net 2013 video and this is a brand new series. What we're going to do is we're going to be making small projects from scratch without using any other people's code and I'm going to hopefully go slow enough that I can explain every little thing that we're doing and utilize a lot of the techniques that I went through in my previous videos. So for this particular one, you may have already guessed by looking at the title, but we're going to be making a basic calculator. Okay, so let's have a quick look at what that might look like. So if I bring up Microsoft's calculator, this is effectively what we're going to make from scratch. Now, we are going to miss a lot of the different functions. In fact, all we're going to look at reproducing is the numbers, okay, not the decimal point. So we're going to do the numbers, the four basic operations, and then the equals button. They're the only ones that we're going to do. And then I'm going to leave it up to you to go and then I'll set you a challenge to make up all the other buttons, so the decimal point and all these different ones, including the memory buttons. That'd be quite interesting to try and do. But for right now, this is what it's going to look like with the text box and the basic buttons and basic operations. So let's start from the very scratch. And because we're making a little mini project, I suggest you give it a good name. I'm going to call mine Basic Calculator. Please make sure you know where you're saving this project. If that's the project you want to save it in, then leave it in there. However, please browse and change that folder where you're going to save all of your permanent projects because you don't want to lose these things in the future. All right, here we are. First things first is I'm going to set up the form ready to go. So for right now, a very basic form. The users can resize it. It's, it's called Form 1, okay, and they can even maximize it and things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly resize it slightly. Okay, probably a little bit too big, and then we'll come back to it. And I'm going to come down to the properties, and I'm going to start at the very top with the name. And because it's the first form, and probably the only form we're going to use in this one, I'm going to call it FRM for form and main. All right. As we come down, we're going to change a few more properties. The form border style, for instance, we're going to set that to fixed single, so they can't resize it. We keep going down. We're going to turn the maximize box off. So they can't maximize the form. We're then going to change the start position whoop, to screen center. So it pops up right in the middle of our screen rather than over on the top or the bottom. And finally, text. Let's set it to basic calculator because that's going to change what our form says and what it says down in the taskbar while it's running. All right, that's the form done. If you would like to go ahead and colorize your form and change the fonts and different things like that, go right ahead. I'm not going to do a single thing because I'm boring and I'm just going to get the job done for the moment. It's up to you to be creative. You are the people of the future. Next thing is let's start adding in our controls. So we're going to have one big display at the top. We're going to use a text box for that one. And then we're going to have all the buttons down the bottom, which are just going to be buttons. All right, so first of all, let's grab our text box. All right, and then let's add one button to our form as well. All right, there's a single button, there's a single text box, and we're ready to go. So first things first, I'm just going to resize this guy across the form, and then the button. Now I could sit here and, I'm going to put a bit of space there first, sorry. I could sit here and try to resize this exactly how I want, or I can be pedantic, come across to the size property, and I'm going to set it to 75 by 75. Why? Because I think that size is actually probably a neat little size to have. Now we need 10 buttons here in this little grid. So what I'm going to do is just simply hold the control key to copy this button and drag it across to the next one. One and two. And because I'm particularly lazy, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to drag all three of them down at the same time. So I'll hold shift, select those two, hold control, bloop, Whoop, I missed, yep, bloop, and then one more button for a zero. All right, there's our numbers. Now we need four operations going down the side. So one, two, three, four, and then one big equals button down the bottom. So let's drag him down here, resize him across, and across. All right, and now let's resize the form so it contains all these a little bit better. All right, now if you want to pause the video and catch up, that's pretty much all we're going to do just for the setup at the moment. The next thing we're going to do is set all the properties of each of the buttons and the text box. All right, so pause it, 
and let's keep on going. Now, the text box here, first things first, for all of your objects, we have to give objects that we're going to use in our code names, okay? Because most of these buttons we're going to use, I like to name them. For the text box, the first three letters we use are TXT. Because this is going to display our result, I'm literally going to use that word, display. All right? And we're ready to move on and set the rest of the properties for the text box. There's only two more properties we're going to deal with. The first one is font. So I'm going to set the size much, much bigger. Let's try out about 26. That's pretty odd. Oh, bang on, actually. It's exactly what I want it to be. The next one we're going to do is going to be read only. I'm going to set that to true. Now, if you were paying close attention in my text box video, I was saying don't use read only in a text box. However, in this case, I would like to give the user the opportunity to highlight the numbers and copy them, just in case they want to copy their answer into something else. So, actually, there's a third property now. Think of it. I wanted to. There's four properties. <laughs> I'm stuffing up majorly today. Text would set that guy to zero. And you see, he's over here on the left. I don't want that. I want to align him to 08. And there we are. So it looks a bit more like the calculator we're used to. Well, most calculators have the numbers on the right-hand side. And that's how we get that done. All right. <coughs> Next thing is we're going to change all of the buttons' text, and we're going to change the font size and the name for every single of these buttons. Now, it probably sounds really difficult, but it's really bloody simple. The first thing is let's set the font size because we can do them all in one hit. What I want you to do is highlight every single one of these buttons like so. Come up to the font property and let's set this guy to oh, 22 maybe. Yeah, let's give that a try. Let's try one button. Let's see what this text size looks like. Let's set his text to 7. That's pretty good. Okay. So, what we need to do is change the text on every other button to sort of reflect what they're going to do. So, what you can do for that is you can click on the next button, and I could type in 8 and press enter, and then I can move on to the next one. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a nice, neat little trick if you haven't learnt it already. I'm going to click on this button, and without going down and clicking on the property, you'll notice I didn't click anything. I'm just going to type in 9. And I'm going to select the next button, and you'll see it's automatically typed that in the text. So that'll be four, and five, six, one, two, three, zero, and then plus, minus, times, divide, and equals. How easy is that? So what we're going to do now is we're going to name all of these buttons. Okay? We're going to click on the first button here, and we're going to use the exact same trick that we just used for the text, but for the name instead. So for the first button, we select it, type in BTN for button, and I'm just going to put 7. And then I can cheat, click on the next button, type in button 8, and then keep on going. It's button 9, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, and 0. Now, because the equals button and the plus, times, minus, and all that kind of stuff, I can't use their symbol. So what I can do is just type in the word. BTN equals. Okay, and BTN add. BTN sub. BTN multiply. No, let's go times. That's shorter. BTN div. And we are ready to go. Okay? Their form is set up, all the objects are named, and we can start coding some stuff. So that's the end of the first part of the video, everybody. I'll see you in the next part of the video. And Hopefully by then your form is set up the exact same way as mine. Alright, see you then everyone.